Okay, <clears throat> I have a lot to share with you. I'm going to probably have to do it in uh, half hour segments, but there's stuff you really need to understand to protect yourself and your horse. Um, first of all, I'd like to read these copyright disclaimers. Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, Copyright Disclaimer, okay, um, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism. I'm going to be criticizing some things in these. Um, I'm going to be commenting. Uh, it's going to be news reporting. It's teaching. It's scholarship. And it is definitely research. Um, fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use, and it is all of these. Also, a warning: um, uh, the owners, authors, me of this video believe in good faith that it constitutes fair use, as per 17 U.S.C. Statute 107. Persons, agencies filing a false or frivolous DMCA complaint may be subject to civil liability and and I'll tell you what I'm gonna take uh, uh, things apart in these videos and including what people teach and what people um, sell us okay because uh, whether you know it or not hoof care is a product it seems um, they sell us these things now it's okay to be sold something if you're being sold something good that's worth the money but a lot of people are being ripped off. Um, I just talked to a girl recently that uh, paid $4,000 uh, to take a bunch of classes and still doesn't know how to trim right, doesn't know the true foot, okay? And uh, the, just the prices these people are charging are exorbitant. It's ridiculous. Be fine if you were really learning something that was the truth, but they're not learning the truth as far as I am concerned. And so, um, uh, you know, like I said, these are this is a product. We have a right to scrutinize it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to learn some more about the digital cushion. Um, I'm learning as I go here. I'm learning new things every day as I share. Um, this is the way people were meant to learn, by doing and sharing. Uh, little one-room schoolhouses they used to have. The older kids would learn and teach the younger kids, and by doing that, they would learn. And that's why we had such wonderful scholarship in America. Um, and that's why we don't now. Okay. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay, so I did these two challenges. The Can You See It Challenge and the Can You Spot the Hoof Distortion Challenge. And it all has to do with the digital cushion. Okay, so um, the Can You See It Challenge. After posting recent videos on what happens to collateral cartilages when the heels are trimmed out of the horse and how they are pulled and enfolded and bound into the foot, I found this picture. Um, now, can you take this and show what's wrong with this picture, meaning what is wrong with the anatomy here? Um, See, there is something wrong with this picture, but uh, I also posted this picture up here, and in this challenge, I said, here are some pictures to go with that post. They are on three different websites and three different horses. Can you tell me which one is the actual healthy one and why? Uh, remember, this is all based on trimming the heels out of the horse and its resulting manifestations. Dumping the bulbs and frog aquarium on the ground, pulling it up and forward, and how it also pulls the cartilage down into the foot. When I'm saying cartilage, now the digital cushion here, that's also cartilage, cartilage but it's called fibro fatty cartilage. Okay? Um, I, you find it sometimes on beef. You try and chew it up, forget it. Boing, 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 your teeth just bounce off of it. Okay, again, I'm going to refresh your memory. Here is the foot as it sits in repose at its normal shape. Okay, now the coffin bone ends right here. All this back here is cartilage. You got your lateral, cold lateral cartilages. Quit calling them lateral cartilages. If they were lateral cartilages, they'd only be on the lateral side. Um, so you call them cold lateral cartilages, just like you have your cold lateral grooves. Okay? 
there um, on each side. All right, so so um, all back here is you got your your um, collateral cartilage, which is thin cartilage, kind of like the cartilage but heavier that's on the end of the chicken bone breast, you know. Okay, and then in between that and under the foot, you have your ungual. I don't know even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Cartilage, which they call digital cushion. Okay. Um, so again, this is the whole foot here, and this is the foot when you have trimmed the heels out and the hairline is pulled down. This would be like extreme, but this happens. And uh, look what it's going to do to your frog here. It's going to push your central sulcus forward. It's going to um, make this all pooch out down here. This is all your frog corium right here from which the frog grows. Okay. And so it can totally uh, like cut the growth off of this part of the hoof. Okay, so this is the kind of foot that gets produced from that when uh, the heels are trimmed out. And I, I know kind of what happened here. The heels were trimmed out, okay, and uh, and originally the foot was most likely trimmed like this. See that? Then this is Anna from Germany, her horse. Then Anna got the horse and started trimming it. And she let this area grow. So then it looked like what you see here. Okay, now she started to restore the heel buttress and open all this back up so that the, this hoof wall would all grow back in. And the foot went from this to this. So from this to, well, getting back to this. Now, notice that the hairline still curves down right here. Okay, it shouldn't. It should be straight back to here. See? So she's still got some more growth to go on back here to really fill out this foot and lift up the hairline correctly. So again, you trim the heels out. Um, as you're trimming it out, it's pulling this hairline down and it's pulling all the cartilage in the back of the foot here forward and under the foot or, you know, pushing it up in a manner that is not anatomically correct. Okay, so before we look at these and evaluate these digital cushions, let's look at what a truly, uh, what the digital cushion is supposed to be shaped like to begin with. Okay, now the first thing you have to realize in the feet that we're looking is, uh, at is they are split right down the middle. Now this here is an example of what a vet or a farrier or anybody could really buy, where they take the whole hoof, they freeze dry it, and then they cut it down the center and they put a hinge on it so you can open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. This is also one of the reasons why vets and farriers don't see the horse as having a whole foot, but they see it as having a, being a capsule with parts on the inside. Okay, don't forget that the horse has a foot on the inside of there. And so what we're looking at are parts of the inside of this foot. Okay, ultimately we are fitting the hoof capsule to this foot here and we want it to be correct. Now as you're looking at this foot, the one thing that's wrong with it is this part here should go straight out this way and this should be held up and supported by a good heel buttress. The coronary band goes straight back like this and curves around the back of the foot, but the hairline stays up. It should not drop like this. Okay, so now this is the inside of that foot. This here around here 
would be the corium that everything grows from. Now, what we want to specifically look at is the digital cushion, which is this area right here. Okay, so we're just going to trace its shape. Now, again, this is the shape of it from the side. See there? That is the shape of the digital cushion from the side. Now this is a correct digital cushion. Um, you'll find on the wild horses that the wild horse has uh, the frog is a little bit different in a different place, which I think is more correct. Okay, but basically we're going to go by this basic shape of the digital cushion. Um, and we're going to see if, how that compares though to the wild horse because really it's the wild horse um, digital cushion that we want to use as the perfect example. A specific wild horse that has the right amount of heel, um, never got uh, distorted feet. I think the heels on this horse got trimmed out a bit here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to compare um, this digital cushion here to these dish digital cushions here. Okay, um, first of all, let's look at um, the one I wanted everybody to evaluate. You know, what is wrong with this picture? Okay, um, if you remember now, I already showed a picture where uh, the cartilage had been totally pulled forward. Remember that? Okay, that is what is going on here with this foot as well. Okay, here is that foot again where I have pulled the cartilage and the frog and everything. See, that is exactly what is going on right here. Okay, now you, you not only need to know the shape of the digital cushion. See there, the correct shape of the digital cushion, but also the correct anatomical shape and placement of the frog. And um, the thing that I say is that everything has a boundary and a place. A place for everything and everything in its place is very good law when it comes to anatomy, don't you think? Because you have anatomy, you know, you don't want your ear uh, growing on your foot, so to speak. So everything has a place. All right, now I want you to notice here, uh, the frog here on this correct foot. Oops, I was not following it very good. But that is the frog. Okay, now look at the frog here. Let's look. Oops, wait a minute. Just a second. Look at the frog here. Okay, let's bring this other one back up again. Okay, what do you notice between this frog here and this frog? Okay, what do you notice in the difference between the shape of the lateral cartilage here, or not the lateral cartilage, the digital cushion right here and the digital cushion right here. Okay, see what is wrong with this picture? Okay, look at the way the frog, as this has been pushed in and pushed the frog up this way, somehow it has messed up the frog corium right here to where you have some frog or something growing and sticking into the digital cushion. Now, look at the bizarre shape. It has a totally different shape than this digital cushion here. Isn't that correct? Um, there's just a lot of things I see wrong. One, I see that um, this right here, this part of the frog that is pushing up here is going to push right into the navicular bone here and right into the deep digital flexor tendon, which is right here. Um, you see um, some bruising here in the cartilage on and where you know just all the force 
what what did it take to take this shape and make it into that do you see what I'm saying okay so we know that this foot is really in bad shape did it have some sole did it maybe look like it had some concavity yes but also this foot was compressed from here and to here going that way like you had squeezed the ends together well if you squeeze those ends together okay this is going to go up like that all this here is putting pressure right in here on the digital on the duh, navicular bone and on it just looks like this has been worn and the part of the coffin bone has been worn away here just things do not look right here at all let me move that okay wait a minute okay let's compare these feet now to um, the digital cushion and everything to this one see we've seen that this is totally different, totally distorted, totally uh, deformed. Okay, that horse is probably why that horse is a specimen there. Okay, let's compare it to this one here. What is the difference you see? Now, remember that from here to here, in the red, that is frog. Okay, and this is digital cushion. Now, look at the strange shape of this, how this is squared back here. Okay, should it be that way? No. Where should the digital cushion be? Should it be down here on the ground? No. Where's the frog? Do you see any frog thickness here? No, this is a foot um, where, well, I'll show you here. Let me copy that. This is a foot where the hairline was down like this, 30 degree hairline. This is something terribly wrong with this foot here. No frog whatsoever to protect the digital cushion. Okay. Okay, let's compare it to this one. Um, a little bit better, but still not much frog right here. And still the hairline very low. The hairline on this horse here was clear up here, right up, right up in here. Or where, or where was it? Let me look again. Okay, the hairline on this horse here was right here, just kind of in between, right there. See that? Okay, let's compare it to this foot here. Look at the frog. This is all frog from here to here. This horse had a tremendous amount of frog. Now, the digital cushion is dried out, okay, but we can see that it was the proper shape. See, and this, had, this horse here had a tremendous amount more frog uh, than any of these horses that we're going to look at here. It, Okay, now this one I couldn't get a good picture of, but again, you see that this horse had a lot of frog. The hairline ends right about here. Right about here is where the hairline ends. Not down here, see? Okay, and the hairline isn't the only thing you have to look at. I mean, look at the squareness of this digital cushion here, the squareness of the digital cushion here. Um, Okay, but you can see that had, this horse here had a well-shaped digital cushion and a very thick, nice frog. A lot of frog here in the back of the foot so as to protect the digital cushion. The horse was not bouncing around down on his bulbs. And on this specimen here, look how high the hairline is right here. Okay, now let's look at this foot here, this, this. You know, how is that even close to being shaped like this? There is absolutely no frog at all. The bulb is pulled way down. The base of the frog is clear down here. <coughs> okay, um, again, pulling the foot together. Pulling the foot together from the toe to here. All right, 
which <clears throat> shoves everything up that way. Okay, now look how there is absolutely no cushion in between the navicular bone and the frog. This is the um, central sulcus of the frog that has been pulled up under the foot and jammed up into the foot like that. You see it? And so the navicular bone, anytime that horse takes a step, there's no cushioning here. Okay, let's look here at the healthy foot so we can see exactly what the primary role of, well, at least some of it, of this digital cushion is. Okay. Okay, first of all, when the horse takes a step, okay, here is P2, your short pastern bone. When the horse takes a step, this joint here, rotates down like this where it hits that digital cushion down here and uh, bounces back up okay now the navicular joint is here to keep this in alignment here so when the horse is walking this joint doesn't want to slip that way okay so that kind of holds everything in motion together there. Now here's your deep digital flexor tendon which comes and it's connected to the underside of your coffin bone right here. That also keeps uh, your navicular bone in place. Okay so you have this cushioning right here for the navicular bone. You see that? All this nice cushioning here for the navicular bone. And then uh, you have this part of the cushioning over here. So this part of the cushioning here for the navicular bone. Um, this part here, all this for when the this descends down, it hits that and, and it helps it rise back up so it isn't just the deep digital flexor tendon doing all the work. Okay, those are those are two usages for it. You know, to protect all these bones, to it's part of the suspension system of the horse's foot. Okay, so all of this, all of the tendons, the ligaments, um, the, the way that the bones are set in the foot, you know, there are one, two, three, technically, these all work together upon this foot here okay the digital cushion okay and the frog is what you you this is all all these linden uh, tendons ligaments cushion and the frog is all a part of and the joints the way the joints are here in all three of these bones four of them including this one this is all the suspension system for the body and foot of the horse and this is similar okay before we had cars we had what we had horses it's not that correct and we rode them it's not that correct have you ever noticed how smooth a horse can be pretty cool isn't it okay have you ever noticed how smooth a car can be even when it can go over bumps and stuff well, the reason that car is so smooth is because man developed what is called a suspension system. And all of this stiff here works together to form the suspension system of the horse's foot. Or you could say his drive drain. So we're just going to kind of look at this. What is a suspension system? A suspension is a term given to the system of springs, shock absorbers, okay, the digital cushion, and the frog are shock absorbers. Um, the tendon, the deep digital flexor tendon is like a spring, almost, like, um, okay, and linkages, the joints are all linked together that connect a vehicle to its wheels. In this case, these connect the vehicle, the horse, to his wheels, which are his feet. And all these things serve 
just like in a car, they serve a dual purpose, contributing to the car's handling and braking. See, all this stuff, not only does it help the horse go and be smooth and um, keep from damaging his joints and all that, but it's what makes him smooth. It's what helps him break as well. Um, this suspension system protects the vehicle itself. Okay, all this protects the horse itself and any cargo, that's you or luggage, <laughs> from damage and wear. Just imagine if the horse did not have this suspension system, how rough that horse would be. I, I've ridden horses that were rough um, due to problems they had with their feet and different things. And the saying used to be, uh, that horse is so rough, it's like she has three wooden legs and one stiff one. See, but that's not how the horse's legs are. Okay, what is the purpose of the suspension system for the car, or the, in this case, the suspension system on the horse? The purpose of the suspension system, it supports the weight, it provides a smooth ride, it allows for rapid cornering without extreme body roll, <laughs> it keeps the tires in firm contact with the road. See, the correct suspension system in the horse keeps the hoof wall okay in firm contact hoof wall and sole in firm contact with the ground and that is why uh, a good barefooted horse that has the correct anatomy has tremendous foot which call footing all right Okay, this is all for your car, and I'm sure it all applies in the same manner for your horse. Allows the front wheels to turn side to side for steering. Um, when the foot is correct, all right, um, horses can turn on a dime. Works with the steering system to keep the wheels in correct alignment. You know, you want a medial lateral uh, balance, right? Okay, when everything's right, that's what you're going to have. Um, it's going to keep your horse in a correct alignment, in correct balance. It isolates the passenger and car cargo from vibration and shock. Okay, and <clears throat> all these bones, it helps them as well be able to wear correctly. I mean, a horse running, that's a lot of weight, that's a lot of pounding. Without this correct suspension system, these bones, the joints just wear right out. Okay. Okay, now the best foot out of all these feet um, is not even the domestic foot that I was using for a comparison, or this foot here, or this one, though it's a little better in, in some respects than some of these. This is bad, bad, really bad. Um, this right here is the ideal foot, but it is very, very dried out. So I'll show you where uh, this foot comes from. Okay, you can find this foot here at Natural Hoof Care by Jason Dara. Um, it is a wild horse's foot that someone gave to him and he dissected it. Okay, look at the amount of heel buttress support on this foot. Um, look at the height of the hairline. Look here, you see the sole ridge around the perimeter of the foot? Again, showing the heel, the heel buttress. Here you can really see the heel buttress pretty good. And he talks a lot about this heel. You can also find him at gobearhoof.com. This is slash Mustang. Okay, now here's the picture in seven. He cut this foot in half. Now, some of you have said you thought there was an issue. There was too much space in here. But what they have found with these wild horses is they have very strong, thick lamina. Okay, and look at the sole ridge right there. 
Okay, so we're going to compare this foot to another foot, wild foot that's on the web. Okay, this is another wild hoof, different one. Um, this is on the web. This is Pete Ramey. Um, and this is a site uh, at hoofrehab.com, his article, Reversing Distal Descent. Okay, so we're going to compare these feet to the domestic foot I showed you that was pretty good. Okay, so the main thing I want you to notice here is uh, the placement of the frog. Look at this. In the back of the foot. Here. Look at the frog here. And look at the frog here. Now, on these two feet here, of course, this was freeze dried, this foot here. So, you know, some of this is shrunk up for sure. The digital cushion. Okay, this foot is a little bit bigger too. But what I want you to notice is the placement of the frog. See how this frog is pulled down under here? The hairline's a bit low. Okay, hairline ended right here on this one, right here on this horse here. Okay, now. Definitely the foot would have been fuller back here because of the digital cushion. Um, again, fuller. But look at the amount of frog. And this foot is actually enlarged to be somewhat bigger than these two. So we're really missing something in the way our heels need to be. Your heels have to grow down enough past this bulb here um, to allow any frog to grow at all. So, and notice um, this frog is pulled forward still. It's right here. This frog is way back and pushed up and look, imagine the cushioning and the suspension in the back of that foot. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at these pictures again here. Again, look at the frog. Oh boy. Look at the frog. Okay, not just the digital cushion because these two work together as part of the suspension system for this horse's foot, for the horse. Okay, now we know this is messed up right here. Okay, this whole foot is messed up and the digital cushion is not even, does not even come close to being shaped like this at all. Okay, look here. Where's the frog here? Look where the hairline is. Clear down, clear right here. Okay, again, look where the hairline is. Down here. Frog is pulled under here. Look at the difference. Okay, the frog in this foot, okay, first of all, from here to here is going to be overall shorter because this is pulled down. Okay, so. Um, if this hairline was lifted up, that foot's going to be this much longer here. Okay, so you have to allow for shrinkage of this foot here, but even shrunk, it's longer than this foot. See there? So this foot would be about an inch longer. If this hairline came up here, and then it had the correct amount of uh, frog and support for the digital cushion and all this foot was frog and everything was pushed back up here. Okay, look at the look at the length on this. Look, wall. Dorsal wall is about the same, but look at how that shortens up the foot. See there? Where's the frog? No frog. No frog at all. No frog. And of course this horse has frog, but foot is just totally weirded out. You know, so we have to try, you know, we can't get our horse's feet. We're going to trim to whatever we've been taught to see. Okay, so um, regarding the 
the hoof distortion challenge and digital cushion now you know and many of you got it right this is the best foot this is a wild foot it never had the opportunity to get distorted because of what man did or did not do to it okay all right i'm going to have some more videos on this very subject <laughs>